Let's dive into how heaps work, focusing specifically on binary heaps. A heap is structured as a complete binary tree, meaning that every level of the tree is fully filled except possibly the last, which fills from left to right. Now, heaps have a key property. In a max heap, each parent node is greater than or equal to its child nodes. Conversely, in a min heap, each parent node is less than or equal to its child nodes. In this video, we'll focus on max heaps, but keep in mind that min heaps function similarly with just the opposite ordering. Since a heap is a complete binary tree, it can be stored efficiently using an array instead of traditional nodes and pointers. This array representation makes heaps very efficient for operations like insertion and deletion. First, we store the root node at the zeroth index of the array. Then, we add its left child, followed by its right child, and continue in this manner, level by level, from left to right. This layout allows us to access any parent or child node using simple index calculations. Now let's look at the formulas for finding the parent and children of any element, given its index in the array. For example, consider an element with the value 30 at index 2. To find its left child, we plug i equals 2 into the left child formula, which gives us index 5. So index 5 is the left child of the element at index 2. Similarly, using the right child formula with i equals 2, we can find the right child's index. To locate the parent of the current node, we use the parent formula with ic equals 2 and take the floor of the result to determine its parent index. This simple indexing allows efficient traversal up and down the heap. Now, let's look at the Python code to implement everything we've learned so far. We'll start by defining a class called MaxHeap. Inside the constructor, we'll initialize an empty array called heap to store our elements. Next, we'll add methods to find the left and right children, as well as the parent of any element based on its index. One important thing to keep in mind is that the height of a complete binary tree is logarithmic. Now, let's take a look at how insertion works in a max heap. Suppose we want to insert the value 43 into our max heap. To do this, we first append 43 to the end of the array, which is equivalent to placing it in the next available leaf node in the complete binary tree structure. Now the newly inserted element might be violating the max heap property. To fix this, we check if this element is greater than its parent. If it is, we swap them to restore the heap structure, effectively bubbling up the element. We continue this process, comparing and swapping with each successive parent until the heap property is restored or the element reaches the root. Keep in mind, the tree structure we visualize is just to help us understand the relationships between elements. In reality, all heap operations happen directly within the array itself. Now, let's look at the Python code for the insertion operation. We'll start by defining an insert method that takes the element we want to insert as an input parameter. First, we append this element to the end of the heap array. Then, we perform the heapify up operation on this element to ensure it fits into the max heap structure. The heapify up function takes the index of the newly inserted element as its input parameter. Inside this function, we use a while loop that runs as long as the current element is not the root and the parent element is smaller than the child. Within the loop, we swap the parent and child elements to maintain the max heap property. After each swap, we update the index to the parent's index, effectively moving the element up the heap until it's in the correct position or reaches the root. Now, deleting an element in a max heap typically means removing the root node, which has the maximum value in this structure. To do this, we start by replacing the value of the root node with the value of the last element in the heap, in this case, 13. Then, we remove the last element, which effectively removes the original root. However, the new root might violate the max heap property, so we need to restore the structure. To do this, we perform heapify down operation, moving the root element down the tree until it's in the correct position to maintain the max heap order. We start the heapify down process by comparing the current element with both of its children. If either child is larger than the current element, we swap it with the child that has the larger value. In this case, we swap with the left child with value 43. Next, we compare again and swap with the right child, which has the value 40. Finally, we compare the current element with its only remaining child. Since this child has a value less than the current element, no swapping is needed, and the process terminates. 
At this point, the max heap property is restored, and the heap structure is complete. The maximum number of swaps we might need to perform is equal to the height of the tree, so the time complexity for both insertion and deletion operations is big O of log n. Additionally, since these operations only rearrange elements within the existing array, they don't require any extra memory. This means the space complexity remains constant. Next, let's look at the code. First, we will start by defining the extract max function. We start by checking if the heap is empty. If it is, we simply return, as there's nothing to extract. Otherwise, we store the root element in a variable called maximum. Then, we replace the root element with the last element in the array, and remove the last element from the heap. Finally, we call heapify down to restore the max heap property. And once the structure is balanced, we return the maximum value. Next, let's go over the details of the heapify down function. This function takes the index of the element that needs adjustment. We start by storing the size of the array in a variable called size, and initializing another variable, largest, with the current index, assuming this element is the largest for now. We then enter a loop where we calculate the indices of the left and right children of the current element, and store them in left and right variables. We then check if the left child exists, and if its value is greater than the current element's value. If it is, we update largest to the left child's index. We then do a similar check for the right child. If it exists and has a larger value, we update largest to the right child's index. If, after these checks, largest is not equal to the current index, it means we've found a larger child, so we swap the current element with this larger child. We then update index to largest and continue the loop to further adjust the heap. However, if largest is still equal to the current index, it means the element is in the correct position, so we can break out of the loop. This completes the heapify down process. The next operation we'll look at is building a heap from a given array. Let's say we have an array and its corresponding tree structure, which initially does not satisfy the max heap property. Our goal is to transform this array into a max heap. To build a max heap, we start from the lowest non-leaf node and perform the heapify down operation on each node, working our way up to the root. The reason we begin from the lowest non-leaf node is that, in a complete binary tree, about half of the nodes are leaf nodes, and they don't need to be heapified. The lowest non-leaf node is found at index n upon 2 minus 1, where n is the total number of elements in the array. This is because, in a complete binary tree, all nodes from this index onward are leaf nodes, so the last non-leaf node will be one position before them. So, we'll begin at the last non-leaf node and iteratively perform the heapify down operation on each of these nodes, working our way up to the root. By applying heapify down from the bottom up, we ensure that every subtree satisfies the max heap property before moving up a level. Now, let's examine the complexity of building a heap from an array. At first glance, it might seem like, since there are about n upon 2 nodes on which we perform the heapify down operation, each potentially taking up to log n time, the time complexity should be big O of n log n. However, this is not a tight bound. To understand why, let's consider how heapify down behaves at different levels in the heap. First, we don't perform any heapify down operations on the leaf nodes, so no swaps are needed at that level. Moving one level up, we find that each node requires, on average, just one swap to maintain the heap property. As we go up another level, nodes may need around two swaps each, but the number of nodes at this level is reduced by half. At the level above that, 
each node may require three swaps on average, and again, the number of nodes continues to decrease. This pattern continues, with nodes at higher levels requiring more swaps, but fewer nodes existing at each of these levels. This pattern can be represented mathematically by summing the work done at each level. As we move up the levels, the work done per node increases, but the number of nodes decreases proportionally. When we solve this summation, it converges to big O of N, showing that the total work required to build the heap is indeed linear in time complexity. Now, let's look at the code for building a heap from an array. We'll start by creating a function called buildHeap, which takes an array as its input. Inside this function, we'll set our heap to be this input array. Then, we'll run a loop starting from the last non-leaf node and move all the way up to the root node in reverse order. For each node in this range, we'll perform the heapify down operation. Now, let's build a priority queue using a heap. A priority queue is a special type of queue where each element has an associated priority. When we insert elements, they are arranged based on this priority and when we pop elements, the one with the highest priority is removed first. First, we'll create an object using the max heap class we've already built. This heap will serve as the core structure of our priority queue. We'll insert elements along with their priorities, treating the priority as the key for organizing the heap. When we remove elements, they'll be popped in order of their priority, with the highest priority element being removed first. This way, our MaxHeap provides the ideal mechanism for efficiently managing and accessing the highest priority items in the queue. Check out the description box below for a link to the GitHub repository, where you'll find all the code we've covered in this video.